Tom Swift in the Caves of Ice by Victor Appleton Chapter 23 Attacked by Natives To state that Tom and his friends were angry at the trick the Fogers had played on them would be putting it mildly. There was righteous indignation in their hearts, and as for the young inventor, he felt that much blame was attached to him for his neglect in not remaining on guard at the place of the lucky strike while Ned went to call the others. "'I guess Andy must have been spying on us,' spoke Ned, "'or he would never have known when to rush up just as he did as soon as we left. "'Probably,' admitted Tom bitterly. "'But bless my penholder!' cried Mr. Damon. "'Can't we do something, Abe? Won't the law—' "'There ain't any law out here, except what you make for yourself,' said the miner. I guess they've got us for the time being. What do you mean by that? asked Tom, detecting a gleam of hope in Abe's tone. Well, I mean that I think we can get ahead of them. Come on back to the ship, and we'll talk it over. They walked away, leaving Andy and his father in possession of the rich deposits of gold, and that it was much richer even than the hole Abe had first discovered was very evident. The two Fogers were soon at work, digging out the yellow metal with the pick and shovels Tom and Ned had so thoughtlessly dropped. "'What little law there is out here, they've got on their side,' went on Abe. "'And they've got possession, too, which is more. "'Of course, we could go at him in a pitched battle, but I take it you don't want any bloodshed.' And he looked at Tom. "'Of course not,' replied the lad quickly but I'd like to meet Andy alone with nothing but my fist for a little while. And Tom's eyes snapped. So would I, added Ned. Perhaps we can find another pocket of gold better than that one, suggested Mr. Damon. We might, admitted Abe, but that one was ours and we're entitled to it. This valley is rich in gold deposits, but you can't always put your hand on them. We may have to hunt around for a week until we strike another. Meanwhile, them Fogers will be taking our gold. It's not to be born. I'll find some way of driving them out. And we've got to do it soon, too. You mean if we don't that they'll soon get all the gold? Asked Mr. Damon. No, I mean that soon. It will be the long night up here. And we can't work. We'll have to go back, and I don't want to go back until I've made my pile. Neither do any of us, I guess, spoke Tom but there doesn't seem to be any help for it. They discussed several plans on reaching the ship, but none seemed feasible without resorting to force, and this they did not want to do, as they feared there might be bloodshed. When night closed in, they could see the gleam of a campfire kindled by the Foger party at the gold pocket from bits of the scrubby trees that grew in that frigid clime. They're going to stay on guard, announced Tom. We can't get it away from them tonight. Though Abe had spoken of some plan to regain the advantage the Fogers had of them, the old miner was not quite ready to propose it. All the next day he seemed very thoughtful while going about with the others, seeking new deposits of gold. Luck did not seem to be with them. They found two or three places where there were traces of the yellow pebbles, but in no very great quantity. Meanwhile, the Fogers were busy at the pocket Ned had located. They seemed to be taking out much of the precious metal. And it all ought to be ours, declared Tom bitterly. Yes, and it shall be, too, suddenly exclaimed Abe. I think I have a plan that will beat them. What is it? asked Tom. Let's go back to the ship, and I'll tell you, said Abe. We can't tell when one of their natives might be sneaking in among these ice caves and they understand some English. They might give my scheme away. In brief, Abe's plan, as he unfolded it, in the cabin of the Red Cloud was this. They would divide into two parties, one consisting of Ned and Tom and the other of the three men. The latter, by a circuitous route, would go to the ice caves where the Fogers had established their camp. It was there that the Indians remained during the day. While Andy and his father labored at the gold pocket, for after the first day when they had had the natives aid them, father and son had worked alone at the hole, probably fearing to trust the Indians at night, though after Andy or his father remained on guard with one or two of the dusky-skinned dog-drivers. 
"'But we'll work this trick before night,' said Abe. "'We three men will get around to where the natives are in the ice cave. "'We'll pretend to attack them and raise a great row, "'firing our guns in the air, "'and all that sort of thing and yelling to beat the band. "'The natives will yell, too. You can depend on that. "'The Folgers will imagine we're trying to get away with their sleds "'and supplies and maybe their gold, "'if they've got it stored in the ice cave.' Naturally, Andy or his father will run here, and that will leave only one on guard at the mine. Then Tom and Ned can sneak up. The two of them will be a match for even the old Folger, if he happens to stay in while Tom or Ned comes up in front to hold his attention. The other can come up and back and grab his arms. If he tries to shoot, likely Andy will remain at the gold hole, and you two lads can handle him, can't you? "'Well, I guess,' exclaimed Tom and Ned together. "'The plan worked like a charm. "'Abe, Mr. Damon, and Mr. Parker "'raised a great din at the ice cave "'where the Foger natives were. "'The sound carried to the hole "'where Andy and his father were digging out the gold. "'Mr. Foger at once ran toward the cave "'while Andy, catching up his gun, "'remained on the alert. "'Then came the chance of Tom and Ned. "'The latter, coming from his hiding place, "'advanced boldly towards the bully.' while Tom, making a detour, worked his way up behind. "'Here, you keep away!' cried Andy, catching sight of Ned. "'I see what the game is now. It's a trick!' "'You're a nice one to talk about tricks,' declared Ned, advancing slowly. "'Keep away if you don't want to get hurt,' yelled Andy. "'Oh, you wouldn't hurt me, would you?' mocked Ned, who wanted to give Tom time to sneak up behind the bully. "'Yes, I would. Keep back!' Andy was nervously fingering his weapon. The next instant his gun flew from his grasp, and he went over backward in Tom's strong grip, for the young inventor, in his sealskin shoes, had worked up in the rear without a sound. The next moment Andy broke away and was running for his life, leaving Tom and Ned in possession of the gold hole, and that without a shot being fired. A little later the three men, who had hurried away from the cave as Mr. Foger rushed up to see what had caused the racket, joined Tom and Ned, and formal possession was taken of their lucky strike. We'll guard it well now, decided Tom, and later that day they moved some supplies near the hole, and for a shelter built an igloo, Eskimo fashion, in which work Abe had some experience. Then they moved the airship to another ice cave nearer their mine, as they called it, and prepared to stand guard. But there seemed to be no need, for the following day there was no trace of the Fogers. They and their natives had disappeared. I guess we were too much for them, spoke Tom, but the sequel was soon to prove differently. It was three days after our friends had regained their mind, during which time they had dug out considerable gold, that toward evening, as Tom was taking the last of the output of yellow pebbles into the cave where the airship was, he looked across the valley. "'Looks like something coming this way,' observed the young inventor. "'Natives, I guess.' "'It is,' agreed Ned. "'Quite a large party, too. "'Better tell Abe and the others,' went on Tom. "'I don't like the looks of this. "'Maybe the sudden disappearance of the Fogers has something to do with it.' "'Abe, Mr. Damon, and Mr. Parker hurried from the ice cave. "'They had caught up their guns as they ran out. "'They're still coming on,' called Tom, "'and are headed this way. "'They're Indians, all right exclaimed Abe. Hark, what's that? It was the sound of shouting and singing. Through the gathering dusk the party advanced. Our friends closely scanned them. There was something familiar about the two leading figures, and it could now be seen that in the rear were a number of dog sleds. That's Andy Foger and his father, cried Ned. They've gone and got a lot of Eskimos to help them drive us away. That's right, admitted Tom. I guess we're in for it now. With the rush, the natives, led by the Fogers, came on. They were yelling now, and an instant later they began firing their guns. "'It's a fierce attack!' cried Tom. "'Into the ice cave for shelter. We can cover the gold mine from there. I'll get my electric gun.'" End of chapter 23